And when should this game be set? Because for me, this is the biggest challenge facing Vicarious Visions. Hello everybody, my name is Alex and welcome to a brand new Crash Bandicoot video. Now in today's video, we are going to storyboard in many ways the next Crash Bandicoot game. We're going to split it into five points, so there's lots of interesting bits going to be addressed here and hopefully you will enjoy it. So part one is going to address where should this new Crash Bandicoot be set. Now in my opinion, the new Crash Bandicoot game should be set across a number of extraterrestrial worlds, all which offer different challenges to handle, terrain to navigate like ice and stuff, but hopefully more creative, and enemies to battle, in addition to an initial series of levels which take place on Earth. How these levels are structured, in my opinion, should be very similar to the way they are structured in the Insane Trilogy, including a selection of more developed vehicle levels. Now, I know that's not going to make everybody happy, but I personally like vehicle levels and it's my theory, so I'm going to keep them there. Part number two, creating an alternate timeline. Now, when should this game be set? Because for me, this is the biggest challenge facing Vicarious Visions. Though it's important we don't write everything from the Wrath of Cortex onwards out of canon. Canon is essentially the story that is officially part of the Crash Bandicoot universe in this case. For me, I think it's also important that the events of the next Crash game are set directly after the Insane Trilogy, just to keep everybody connected with the story. Now I say this because a lot of players that have played Mind Over Mutant, you know, all those games, you would love to just dive into a sequel to that. But unlike myself who has done a fair bit of research on the Crash games beyond Warped, lots of new players probably don't know anything about Mind Over Mutant, etc. And we need everyone on board, we need everyone on board to make this Crash reboot a full on success. But achieving both those things, keeping all the new fans happy, is gonna be a massive challenge. So my workaround here is that with the help of Dr. Entropy, Cortex contacts his previous self face to face. This is the Cortex that is based after Mind Over Mutant. This is the Cortex which has faced defeat after defeat. And he informs his previous self of how many defeats are to come should he continue along his current path. Instead, Cortex should scrap his latest secret weapon, which in this case is Crunch Bandicoot, because remember, this is set after the events of Crash Warped, as it will fail him, and he should instead pursue a new plan. Before returning to his own timeline though, Cortex does some other stuff as well. He tells his younger self that only he can be trusted to spearhead the true path of evil, which unsurprisingly makes his younger self even more egotistical, in addition to even more cautious of Uka Uka. There are a number of effects that this has, so it creates an alternate timeline where games beyond this point will set, therefore keeping the previous games in canon, but also setting us up for a new run at the series. Crunch Bandicoot is now no use to Cortex having been informed he will fail, so in Crash 2020 he is little more than a prisoner of Cortex's. The third thing is that a new plan is devised involving the Elementals because as I keep saying, this is set after the events of Warped and in Crash Wrath of Cortex the Elementals are there. They've not just gone away, Uka Uka will still be thinking of these, they're just going to be in a different timeline now. Part number three, a new villain. I don't think that was necessary, but I did it anyway. Due to Cortex's refusal to deploy his new secret weapon, Uka Uka introduces a brand new villain into the series in order to support Cortex in overseeing this new grand plan. This new villain is an old experienced hand in the style of a 19th century British commander. He possesses a track record of spreading evil and destruction. Maybe he could possess this record of evil from an alternate dimension, but that's kind of not too important. Now, although Uka Uka is pitching this as supporting Cortex, in reality, this new character is an attempt to control much of his mission without getting rid of Cortex. Remember, Cortex and his allies, most notably Brio, are not expendable due to their great intelligence and skills in creating weapons, etc. So although Uka Uka is a bit frustrated with Cortex, he can't really just throw him out at this point. From a player's point of view, it is evident that this new character is a cold-hearted individual who is keen to see evil emerge victorious with or without Cortex. He's quite clearly patronising, and just like a lot of historical generals, though he can raise many questions, he does not always seem to have many answers. Now, there are a number of effects that this has likely had, but one I want to mention is that Cortex, who is already more egotistical and cautious of Uka Uka than ever, due to the words he had with his future self, and we know how much he loves himself, is encouraged by this to bring in his niece Nina Cortex, who should be a major boss fight, and reconnect with his old friend Brio. Getting these two allies on side is going to be crucial to secure his position. Though I have talked a lot about the outskirty things in this video and added a lot of detail to the important dynamics of this story, what is the evil plan? What kind of thing is Cortex planning to turn his fortunes around? 
Why does he want all the crystals, basically? And that is today's comment question. I want to know, working in the parameters of the stuff I've suggested here, what should Cortex's brand new evil plan be? Also remember to hit the like button if you are enjoying, subscribe to the channel for more content like this, and feel free to share it with people as well. I keep saying they don't have to be people you like, just share it. Part number four, the mission begins. Crash Coco and Aku Aku hearing of Cortex's new plan for evil. I don't know what it is yet, you're gonna have to suggest it. And the fact another mutated bandicoot, Crunch Bandicoot, is now imprisoned with Cortex, mobilize. Further allies I would like to see come back include Polar, Pura, plus the possibility of a friendly mask, which gives Crash special abilities. I want this to be as interesting and unique as possible. As a couple of examples, the mask could be an anti-gravity mask, which helps Crash explore dangerous new worlds, or super as Crash so that he can take on ginormous enemies. I want it to be as interesting as possible. So Crash and Co. jump straight into the action of gathering crystals from across alien worlds. However, before they head into the fascinating worlds in the sky, there are some familiar locations where an initial batch of crystals can be found. One such location is Von Clutcher's theme park. After gathering the crystals from the park, and as a result clearing the park of Cortex's henchmen and allowing it to reopen for business, Pasadena, who is a loyal friend of Von Clutcher's, as we all know, to show her gratitude offers to help Crash should he need someone to raise for some crystals. At this point, it's pretty clear that she has an affection for Crash, and this could be revisited throughout future games. Now, as a result of Pasadena's offer, in a number of vehicle kart racing styled levels, players get to choose whether to race as Crash or Pasadena in a race for crystals. This is a way of introducing new characters. Now, I know it's not everyone's cup of tea that the first one I went for was Pasadena, but the first kind of Crash game I really put my hands on was Tag Team Racing, and I wanted to sort of be true to my experiences and just say who I wanted to see, really. Having completed the initial levels, the game progresses just as the original trilogy did, and includes five to six unique and fascinating worlds, all with a boss fight at the end of each. These boss fights should be against, in my opinion, Tiny Tiger, Dinga Dial, Engine, Nina Cortex, and Bria, and they should all be supported by one of the elemental mass, and will hopefully be even more creative than what we saw in the Insane Trilogy. As one example, it would be cool to see Dingo Dial use a mixture of Flamethrower and Tail Attacks, for example, just to spice it up a bit. Part number five, the conclusion. Now, after collecting the crystals just like it should be, Crash and Cortex come face to face in the final Bass Bottle. Bass Bottle. Crash and Cortex come face to face in the final boss battle of the game. By this point, the relationship and rivalry between Cortex and the new character has played out, with Cortex ultimately banishing this new character out of his command center. Uka Uka chooses to go with him, leading their re-entrance open for a future installment. By the way, if you want to fight this new character, the only way to do that is by 100% in the game as a little small bonus level. Following the conclusion of the final battle, Crash, unsurprisingly, emerges victorious and saves the world from whatever evil plan Cortex had with the crystals and frees Crunch. Cortex lays throwing an absolute paddy on the floor, seemingly in tatters with his best henchman defeated yet again. A real key bit here is that this leaves a number of possibilities for the future with a storyline for Cortex. He could possibly play a slightly closer role to Crash in future games, not wanting to keep losing to the Bandicoot every single time he comes up with a new evil plot. If Cortex was to sort of mellow a bit and kind of pack in a little bit, could this new threat to everybody come from another source? Could the next game after this be a way to introduce some 10th dimension characters from Twinsanity? Or could Uka Uka and his new experienced ally make a return and try and basically kill everyone? Another possibility to Cortex's constant fear of losing is does this drive him to even greater evils? Does it strengthen his resolve and make him want to be successful even more? The next game could see him go to even greater heights of evil and show his character develop in that way. Anyway, that is just one theory of I'm sure millions people could come up with for the new Crash Bandicoot game, but do let me know what you think. Also, make sure you answer the comments question down below. I would love to hear what kind of plan you think Cortex has come up with. Thank you so much for watching this video today. If you want to see another video from ourselves, make sure you check out the Crash Bandicoot video in the box below. Also, make sure if you have enjoyed that you like this video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss more regular Crash content, and share this video with a friend or an enemy or anyone. Thank you so much for watching today. My name is Alex, and I will see you in another video soon.